Hi everyone, and thanks for joining our session today on Resolver's Waiver 21 Threat Assessment application. This application is built on the Resolver core platform and designed in partnership with Dr. Reed Malloy and Dr. Stephen White, the developers of the Waiver 21 framework. The Waiver 21 framework, Workplace Assessment of Violence Risk, is a 21-item coded instrument for the structured assessment of workplace and campus-targeted violence. The product of this partnership being a powerful case management tool that employs the Waiver 21 framework to assess violence risk. With this application, your team will find a structured approach to case development following an intuitive and proven process. With this structure and the strength of the application's platform, team collaboration is enhanced. This takes form in a powerful suite of tool offerings, including action plans, email notifications and escalations, and all backed by our powerful workflow engine. Finally, we offer a secure repository of information, allowing for records to be easily retrieved and represented in varying forms to suit multiple audiences. Today, we will ta be taking a quick look at the application, beginning with a quick overview of the platform and its components. This is the Resolver Waiver 21 Threat Assessment Application homepage, the home screen that will greet your team each time they log in. The first thing you will notice about this application is that it is a browser-based application, which affords your team the opportunity to access the platform from any type of device. Now, let's direct our attention to the main screen. Here we have a few elements to go over. The first will be the profile which we can see represented with my name, Riley Ty, at the top. This represents our role-based permission model, which allows us to flexibly and effectively control how individuals work with the platform and what records they can see or develop. If we look towards the center of the page, we will see my tasks. This portion reflects our workflow engine and acts as a rolling to-do list for each user. As cases are initiated and developed, there are invariably going to be follow-up actions and responsibilities that need to be coordinated. Through this platform, we are able to initiate these actions, sending email notifications that direct individuals back to the platform and provide them with the information necessary to complete their work. If we look towards the left-hand side of our screen, we can see Report an Incident and the new Case Queue. The Report an Incident dropdown represents our web portal a tool meant to reduce the barrier for information getting back to your team. The portal is a link that you can share with your entire company, allowing them to easily access it from their desktop, smartphone, or tablet, and provide your team with important information. This is a single and additional avenue you can provide your employees. However, we know that information often comes through multiple avenues, such as phone calls, emails, or through tip lines. Under the new case queue, we handle all these other avenues, providing your team the ability to screen new information and mold it into a consistent format for cases to be initiated and then developed. Within this application, everything is case-centric. All elements related to the case can be found in some form on this record. And towards the top, we see information that would have come through the web portal and through the screening process. Now, as the Waiver 21 framework dictates, we will begin by building up an objective, opinion-free understanding of the case. And this begins with understanding who was involved and where. Here we see Paula B, the subject of concern. Within Paula's record, we have a breakdown of Paula's history and characteristics. As we continue, the Waiver 21 framework affords your team a wealth of opportunity to capture information related to the incident. These descriptions are meant to be very opinion-free. Who was involved? It was Paula, Sam, and Sandra. As we look towards the bottom of this case, we will find action plans and case chronology. Action plans allow for task management directly from the case. As interviews need to be taken or security needs to be coordinated, we can initiate all actions directly from the case. Now, if I click into this action plan, here we can see that Riley Ty was assigned to this interview that took place with Sandra on March 13th, 2017. Below actions will be the case chronology. This is the story of how your case and your understanding of the case took place. Capturing here points of interest or noteworthy events that occur during or before the case began. 
This portion is really an exercise in understanding the flow of events and also in protecting your company. Assessments, much like cases or action plans, can be assigned to individuals or teams that you would dictate, following the same home screen and email notification structure that we saw before. I'll transfer now to a complete assessment for us to review. Here is the assessment form, and this would likely only be viewable by an individual who had been assigned to complete the assessment, such as Riley Ty uh, seen here. Below, we have listed the 21 indicators. And what is important is that through our assessments, we are coding or assessing at specific points in time. Within motives for violence here, we see two codings and a trend towards escalation. Additionally, we've embedded framework guidance throughout, giving your team easy access to information they need to complete the assessment. Indicator definitions, metric definitions, and relevant probing questions will all be tailored for each indicator and easily accessible right here on the form. And so as an individual completing this assessment, I would be able to go through the 21 indicators as we saw earlier and provide that final risk opinion narrative. But before we go back to that report, there's a final tool to review. And that tool is called the relationship graph, and it's visible at the bottom of every record. This is an unfiltered view that shows the natural connection between the records you are already developing. Each circle represents a record. And so today, we'll end our session with the final report. Here is the culmination of all the work we've seen. The final report showing our coding of each indicator and the supplemental risk opinion narrative below, which outlines the recommendations in clear areas of interest. This has been a brief overview of Resolver's Waiver 21 Threat Assessment application, where we are striving to create a simple, well-organized application that leverages the proven Waiver 21 framework, offering a consistent, standardized format that allows for easy collaboration, task management, and intuitive use. Finally, the application provides you security for all your records, the opportunity to automate the process that develops them, and final representations that provide clear understanding of targeted violence risk and the efforts that your team has put forth to understand that. Thank you everyone for joining our session today on Resolver's Waiver 21 Threat Assessment application. For any further questions, feel free to email, phone, or view our webpage with the information provided on the screen now.